Hello and welcome to a cup of conversation on BRT TV. My name is John Gazi, and in the studio today I have two very important guests. A new subject, brand new people for me to meet and for you to also watch on BRT TV. And first of all, next to me is the lovely Julia Kochak Dede, and she was a graduate from took my college in Nevkosha from Guzelios, and uh, she studied English literature and humanities at East Mediterranean University in Gazimausa. Then she studied masters in European studies in University of Vienna, and then Waldorf education for class teachers in Danube University, Krems, in cooperation with Alanis University of Germany. She's worked as an English teacher, translator, and at a biodynamic farm. We'll find out more about Julia on the programme today. And joining us also, I'm very honoured to have Christopher Crowder. He writes here, inspirational speaker, but uh, he is an international lecturer, writer, school principal and consultant. And Christopher Crowder was the founder and CEO from 1990 to 2012 of the European Council for Steiner Waldorf Education, which represents some 710 schools in 27 countries. And He's here today with Julia, and I'm very honoured to have these guests on my cover conversation. So first of all, guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank it's you. very uh, nice of you to take time out of your busy schedule. I know, Christopher, you're only here for a few days on the island yes, of Cyprus, so yes. thank you for squeezing us into thank your you. busy schedule. It's great to have you here. And thank you, Julia, for bringing Christopher to BRTK. Now, Julia, let's start with you. As I said, you are a graduate from Chukmai College in Nefkosha, and you are in education. So when you were studying at uh, university, were you always interested in becoming a teacher or translator? What was your passion? What's your passion, Julia? I don't know what my passion <laughs> was. Um, I, I liked enjoying my life with my friends and spending time. Uh, and then uh, the being in nature in Austria, when I went to live in Austria, then I realized that um, I could work as a teacher, but I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something where children were happy, because uh, that is what we all need. And that brought me to Waldorf, because I was already then working for this biodynamic uh, farm. And I found out how it felt very different there, how it felt much better more uh, nicer and happier to be in that uh, little community. So what is exactly, very briefly, a biodynamic, biodynamic farm? I mean, what is so different there uh, that makes you feel connected to this way of thinking? What's so different there? Is it, I think you were saying on the radio with my colleague Denise Phillips, holistic? We, <clears throat> yes, uh, well, I mean, I did not work on the farming side at that, at that point. I was cooking in the kitchen, but it's just that we were uh, working together to do everything, like with the owner, like there was no uh, hierarchy in that. Uh, hi and um, uh, like after some point, every day different people cooked. It was like a family. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, uh, I mean, it's a long time now and I didn't have the awareness, but I just, I just felt how, uh, and how uh, careful they were about the plants and how to develop them further and the healthiest way possible, I remember mm -hmm. from those years. And this is something that amazed me. It is amazing. It sounds very interesting. I have never heard of the uh, Waldorf Steiner way of educating and the schools and uh, I'm learning more as I'm listening to you guys speak and I want to say hello once again to Christopher Clowder. Mm -hmm. Now Christopher, um, you are from the UK originally uh, but you've travelled around the world. You're back in Sussex now at the moment with your lovely wife Yvette but uh, you began your career in education, is that right? Yes, I started off as a, as a teacher, uh, first in state education, then I moved into Steiner education, because actually I was a ex, I'm an ex-Steiner student. I was at a Steiner school right. for part of my schooling time. Yeah. So you are uh, a graduate from Steiner yourself, so you know the system inside out, probably. Yes, I know it from many sides, but like many of our students, when I left school, I rejected it. Really? I, because you... You feel, well, this is wonderful, I've had a great time, and it's social and whatever, I've got my exams, but is it the real world? And that's what you feel like when you're 18, a yeah. little bit. Is it the real world? So I had to go and find out what the real world was like. 
and then gradually then drifted back to it later, finding in it a sort of deep essence that I found very appealing. It is very interesting, and there's a lot that we can learn from you guys. And on the internet, we found out that Waldorf education inspires the spirit of the child while eliciting academic excellence through educational artistry. Now, I can see that there's some sort of uh, connection between educating the child, but using uh, art, maybe dancing, singing, artistic. Is that how, I mean, how would you describe the Waldersteiner way of education? I would say teaching is an art in itself. Yeah. And teaching is learning. And if you're a good teacher, you're learning all the time from the children as well, and, uh, and the people around you, the parents, your colleagues. It's all a process of learning. And if we respect the child, I think they can be of great assistance in helping us be imaginative, keep our sense of humour, and put things in a, in a healthy proportion. So the art in the science was not just art lessons, there are many of them, and it's a very important part of the curriculum, but the art of being a human being and all the arts that we create are intrinsic to every lesson. Mm -hmm. The way you time it, the way you speak, the way you move, what you choose, what sort of facts you choose. Behind all that, there's a creativity quality which makes a good teacher. And this is what the children listen to. Then they can learn very economically. They can learn much quicker, in a way, because it just doesn't just appeal to the head and the intellect. It also appeals to the heart and their feelings. Because we can't imagine that children are sitting there with no feelings, just objects of... Yeah delivery of information, they feel. So what, as a ward of teach, you have to work with all these different capacities of the human being, the whole human being, in yourself and with the children. And that gives you a certain respect and also helps you continue with a sense of curiosity that all children have. You keep that as an adult and also a sense of wonder at the world and the marvelous world that we live in, mm -hmm. the people that inhabit it. And that, I think, the children absorb that, that enthusiasm, that heart enthusiasm. The children absorb that as well as just the things they need on an intellectual basis. Very, very interesting. I would like to add, yes. this, is, uh, uh, this is what we are doing as well here in our association. Uh, we have uh, visiting lecturers coming for the uh, teacher education that is taking place in the South. Of Nicosia, and they come to us as well, and uh, we we do painting, wet on wet painting. Uh, all uh, they are natural colors, and it's like you cannot create a shape with it. It's just it just flows, mm. and it's a different experience. You experience the colors, for example, and it's all uh, very artistic, and it opens up a lot of things in us to make us more free for for new thinking. We do, for example, doll making with our teachers and as well some mothers who are interested. Uh, we, we, do, we make dolls from scratch and all with natural materials. Uh, every little piece of it, uh, like from natural wool, we dye them naturally, like with uh, um, um, rose and vegetables and... And now uh, we are working on human, um, um, on knowledge of human being. And uh, now we will, we are starting soon to uh, work with children, like to do uh, certain activities with children that we do. Also painting, also uh, other um, like uh, fairy tale, uh, and um, yeah. So we have such plans, I wanted to add to it, because this is what gives us the patience, you know, as teachers or mothers or fathers, you know, also fathers can take place in such activities. They can also make dolls and knit. This is what they do in Waldorf schools. So that uh, we have all the qualities that are necessary to be uh, models for children. It is all very interesting, Julia, and I know that you have mentioned an association. It's actually yeah. the Art of Education Association, yes. which is based in Lefkosha, the Dedeboy area of Lefkosha. Is that right? Yes. Is that where you meet? Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are you all educators <coughs> in this group? Are you all interested in 
Um, yes, we are all educators, uh, mostly, not all, but uh, th um, mainly three uh, of our members are getting Waldorf education, two in Istanbul um, and one here in Cyprus. Right, so Waldorf education is very, very interesting. It's a very different uh, way of thinking. And uh, if we go back, I mean, we've got a lot of history here that we can uh, go back to. Uh, Rudolf Steiner, who was the pioneer for uh, this, uh, an Austrian-born scientist and philosopher, Rudolf Steiner, from 1861 to 1925, lectured extensively throughout Europe, and uh, he was working from esoteric traditions as well as natural science. And it goes on, I mean, lots of the, uh, things here that we can talk about, although uh, this word is new to me, anthroposophy, yeah. if I said that right, and lots of great uh, work. Tell us a bit about this. Uh, this guy, this wonderful visionary man, ahead of his time, Rudolf Steiner, what's his background, uh, Christopher? What can we say about him that inspired him to form this uh, form of education and to share it around the world? Because already as a child, he could see beyond just what we call the material world. He had a sort of spiritual vision what impels us as human beings. And he developed anthroposophy, which means the wisdom of man, as a sort of science of exploration of the human soul. And that's what that is. That's why it encompasses so many facets of human life and can be so inspiring in what Julia said, in, in new thinking, new ideas, bringing innovation in and making them real, realistic at the same time. So it's a way of, it's a way of looking. It's not a a faith, not a belief, it's just a perspective that you can develop from what he gave in his lectures and in his books. It's a sort of in, internal training, in, interior training in a way, yeah. just by working through what he saw and seeing the results of that manifest in the world in many different ways. You were saying on the radio with my colleague Denise Phillips that there's uh, you know, many schools around the world in many countries, whether they are rich areas, poor areas, yeah. Some are private, some are state-funded uh, schools, depending on the legislation in the country they are established. Here you are in Cyprus now, and I believe this is your second visit to the island, is that right? Sorry, it's... Second, your second visit to the island of Cyprus. This is my second visit, yes. Mm. And so what's happening here? Why are you here at the moment uh, for a very short period of time before you have to leave again? Well, since I was here last three years ago, the, the school in Limassol has taken off. When I first came, we had conversations yeah. about it beginning. Now it's there. And so I've been asked to come and look at it to see in what way it, it, it's come forward it, with the view of embracing it in our international movement. We have 1,300 schools and we have a way of recognition. And I've been asked to come to look at the school again and then to recommend that it goes on our world list. Right. Uh, I would just like to add a little bit about the word educator because that isn't just teachers, there are parents. And I think very important for our schools is that they are school communities, that the, it, the schools are born carried by parents to begin with until there are enough teachers then to carry it forward. Right. It's very much coming from the parental educating point of view. And therefore, it's very important both in Limassol and here in Nicosia that it's carried by a group of people putting their talents and their gifts together to create something new. And it's also then, for them, a process of learning. It's not, it's not easy to start a school. <laughs> it's because normally the state provides it. It's a tradition. It's a way of doing it. There are rules, regulations. But doing it out of one's own conscience and sense of responsibility is a different sort of task. But it's very rewarding. We all find aspects of ourselves we didn't know they existed. Gifts, possibilities, potentials that are completely new and that's the joy of creating these schools together with the children. It sounds like a fabulous experience, a very rewarding experience to be part of this. We are just going through it. Yeah. Um, uh, we're not there yet in the north. We are getting there soon, hopefully. Uh, but in the south, uh, Stavrodromi Waldorf Education uh, is uh, 
establishing a school. Uh, I'm also part of this team. And uh, as parents and teachers, we're really like uh, going there to do our best and uh, to change the way we think with the problems that come along yeah. with the deficiencies. And we, we learn to think actually much differently and that that is like uh, like overcoming ourselves a little bit more each time and that opens up a new world to us as we go along. But what is so different? I mean, you're explaining it so well, both of you. Uh, you maybe want to go back to school again and start, you know, from, <laughs> from grade one up to the, you know, until I graduate. But what is the difference when you are uh, teaching or when you are in the classroom with uh, students at a Steiner school? What is so different from a regular school that, you know, what are, I mean, there's probably a lot of differences, but what are the major things that you can maybe uh, share with our viewers now? Why? Why should we send our child to a, a Steiner school? What is a, a big reason for you? Is it that your children will be taught in a different way? Is it, as, you, as Christopher said, a community? So are the parents involved more with the children's education? Why is it so different, uh, Julia? Well, we do need that community. We, we want to feel that we're all together somehow. We, we need that to mm -hmm. become a community. Uh, and on the other side of it, when, when we look at the children, um, to really see a child and to be able to help the child go the way that he needs to go. And here I would like to give... give uh, um, my teacher to speak about it, he elaborated, uh, elaborated much better. Yes, Christopher, I mean, tell us, you were in the system, you graduated, you graduated from uh, Steiner. Yeah. What is the big difference? I mean, everyone feels, I mean, like Julia's saying now, it's a, a different way of uh, teaching, it's amazing, you feel different, you learn yourself. Yeah. What, what do you think are the main characteristics of a Steiner school that stand out from other schools? that the subjects that we teach, that are subjects that all schools teach, are not the goal. They are a tool to self-development. All education is self-development, basically. And so what we're doing is creating, using the subjects to help each child individually find themselves and find their own path in life. Of course, they need all the aspects that other people have. Literacy, numeracy, IT skills, Yes, they need just the same, but on the other, but the attitude to those things is different. The gesture, the path. So we adapt the subjects to nourish the child. <laughs> and in that way, the children become incredibly enthusiastic for learning. I know from my experience that a day off school for a child is a sort of tragedy. They don't, they want to be, they think they're missing something. Wow. And it's very direct teaching. We don't open textbooks or say page 96. The teacher will teach directly. The teacher has to prepare the lessons themselves. So they're facing the children, they're looking them in the eyes, and they're bringing the subject in a creative way through themselves, through their speech and what they've studied the night before. So it's a direct teaching method rather than indirectly that somebody else has prepared in a book or somebody's prepared as a curriculum. Each teacher has to absorb the material themselves and bring it to the children. And the teacher knows every child in that classroom. They know every child. And then exactly if they're listening or not listening or what happened the day before or something went wrong in the family. So they can, by teaching directly, they can adapt to what the children, what they see the children actually need at that time, at that place, in that classroom, which is not pre-prescribed. So it gives that flexibility and that enables the place to live in a different way. And there's a feeling of warmth, of being happy being our children are happy we've had I've known for instance people have sent their children to Steiner schools because they've seen the other children go there and they smile there's an element of joy yeah. learning it can be joyful I mean you have the discipline and you struggle to get it into your head so, but it also can be a joy in it and a school that can exemplify joy then makes learning much more easy and much more worthwhile for life does it matter at what age a child starts to go into the system for Steiner? Uh, you have preschool, yeah. obviously, and then going up from primary to secondary yeah. education. Um, let's, let's say somebody here wants to find out more, but their child is like, say, 
eight, nine or ten, yeah. can they adapt easily from a regular school going to a, a Steiner school? I did at 13. Right. I moved to the Steiner school when I was 13. Right. Uh, yes, they can at any age because we, we respect the individuality of every child. Yeah. Some children come in different routes. Yeah, they, they, perhaps they needed that time in a different school or perhaps mm. whatever. Uh, and some children leave early because they want a different form of education. Everybody's individual, everybody's different. Yeah. And di if we respect that, then every ch child... What we find is that when the children come to a Steiner school, it takes about six months to accommodate because they're used to more of systematic sort of box-like, this is the way we do things and rules, regulations, tests. They come and they think, Wow, I can breathe here. And they have to find out that there are rules and ways of behaviour, but they're not prescriptions. It's about respect for each other. Yeah. And you learn to respect each other. And we think that has a deeper moral foundation, in a way, than just obeying a rule. You create the rules as a community together because you don't want to hurt people, because you want to live nicely with people. You want them to respect you. You want to develop self-confidence out of that. And that's part of teaching. And it's very strange that we put children in a school and ignore that side of being a human being. And what we say, we put it in the centre. What it means to be human as, as the intrinsic soul of the school yeah. from the beginning. And then through the age, you do things in a different way. I mean, the playfulness of ch early childhood, that's so important. The principle of playfulness, play, imagination and movement. Later on, when they become adolescents, it becomes much more intellectual, philosophical, thoughtful, critical thinking. That needs to be adapt developed. Yeah. So the children go through a journey, but the teachers go through a journey with them. A very, very enjoyable journey, it sounds like, it and uh, lucky kids mm. who are going to uh, uh, Steiner School. And in fact, coincidentally, uh, it's the 100th anniversary of Steiner, isn't it? Because the first Waldorf school opened in 1919 in Stuttgart, Germany. Mm. And uh, so this is the 100th anniversary this year, yeah. 100 years of Steiner. So it's not a new thing. It's been around for 100 years. And so, Hulia, I know that you want to, hopefully your dream is to bring a Steiner school to the Turkish Republic on Northern Cyprus. And you are starting your inquiries now uh, and, you know, getting things going. Do you see uh, a Steiner school opening up in the near future, maybe in a couple of years' time? In a couple of years' time, I believe. Yeah. It, it requires a lot of work, a lot of lovingly work, uh, and I, I believe that we're on the path and uh, it, it will get better and better, yeah. as well with the uh, current uh, establishment of the other school in, yeah. uh, in the south of Cyprus. Uh, it always helps us, uh, you know, uh, to have uh, other schools in the nearby. Then we work together and we grow, both of us grow. Mm -hmm. And obviously you'll have to have teaching staff who are trained in this way. There is a training since uh, November 2018. A training has started in the, in the south of Cyprus. It's been taking place in the um, a buffer zone, but now we couldn't find a new place, so we're now in the um, south, uh, mm -hmm. continuing. And that is something that keeps us together, uh, this education, because it really feeds and nourishes our soul and the, with that, a lot of information that we uh, learn and um, this uh, brings life into the initiative, mm -hmm. into working of the um, community on the other um, project of school. I know come my, about in my son, a nine-year-old son, he's in education now, and a lot of the education in the TRNC and around the world as well is based on uh, seeing their level, are they up to standard with reading, with their math, with every subject. and. As they get older, there's a lot of pressure for exams and um, remembering things. Do you think now that when you open up a Steiner school in a couple of years' time, there'll be an interest for people who want to break away from traditional education and maybe to, to share in your knowledge in the fact that you want to keep the child individual, make a community, everyone respect each other, the individuality 
get them to express themselves more freely. Do you think that we are ready here in all cybers for such an education system? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we are. Uh, I have been uh, speaking to many people and they, they love the idea. And uh, I'm sure when it's there, more and more more people will come because uh, then they will be able to see what's happening and how how it takes place yeah. and how they feel how the children feel in school and when parents come when individuals come how do they feel in the school mm. because it makes a, a huge difference than when you experience it mm -hmm. alive in front of you yes i'm sure they are ready we are ready to have a Steiner school here. Yes, we are. In the TRNC. Excellent. Well, I want to say uh, thank you for coming today to the program. Mm -hmm. And so you are here for a few days. I know that you are going to be uh, going to the schools. Do you then, at the end, I mean, let's say in the future, uh, Julia, uh, Julia's dream of a Steiner school in, nor in the north uh, happens, will you come back and then oversee everything and make sure that, yes, they are next in our list and they are you know, officially recognised? I wouldn't say oversee. We're colleagues and yeah. we work together. I, if I'm invited, I would be very happy to come back. But it's up to the school to decide that. We don't work on a very hierarchical basis. We don't That's have good. a big office that tells them what schools, what to do. Because every school is unique. They're in a different culture, different language, different history. So they have a unique character. What is in common is the point of view, the view of what it means to be a human being and that we share. So I would very much appreciate if the school is interested to come back. But it's not as an overseer. Uh, this is something because we work very much on this sense of individual responsibility right. and trusting people, mm -hmm. tr when uh, trusting that the individual will do their best in whatever circumstances they find themselves. And that's what's more important than being told what to do from above. Well, you seem that you enjoy your, your profession. You're traveling around the world and you are lecturing and you have a, you know, a very good manner about you. So I'm sure you're very busy and I hear you're off to Spain soon. Yes, Next. I've been, work, been working in Spain for about 10 years now, developing social and emotional education in the public school system, which in, 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 the idea comes from Steiner Education, but it's perfectly adaptable to bring more joy, more music, more art into schools. And we're finding it turns schools and families, it makes them happy to bring this into the public school system. So I've done a lot of research and we've done publications on behalf of the Spanish Foundation and now going into the whole realm of developing creativity and the arts in, as professional development in different spheres of life. Like I said, thank you very much for taking time out today to come to us. I know you're very, very busy and you are limited in time, so you'll be rushing off now uh, to do whatever you have to do in the next couple of days. But Julia, thank you for bringing Christopher to us, to BRTK today. Good luck with your work as well. With thank you the, very much. Uh, Art of Education Foundation as well, and with your work with Steiner. And hopefully you'll come back again uh, in a couple of years' time to announce that the school is opening. Hopefully. That would be a dream come true, wouldn't it? That would be really good. Now we're hoping for the Stavro Dormi school to open yeah. uh, in September uh, 2019 and uh, we'll be very happy uh, with that and uh, then we will continue. One step at a time. Exactly. And always together, supporting each other. One step at a time in the right direction, all together. Exactly. Fantastic. Thank you. And I'm sure that they can find out more, our viewers can find out more by... On, on Facebook, on Facebook. Um, um, Art of Education Association, Eğitim Sanatı Derneği, mm -hmm. or uh, Stavrodromi Waldorf Education mm -hmm. uh, for the other uh, establishment in the south of Nicosia. Excellent. Once again, thank you guys for coming to the program, and I wish you all the best, and thank you for bringing uh, the Steiner Education to our viewers here at BRTK. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we have come to the end of another couple of conversation here on BRT TV. Until next week, take care and go well. Bye-bye.